Hello, traders. Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, Sunday, the 8th of September, 2024. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll discuss the indices closing just above put wall support on a very negative note with all S&P 500 sectors showing selling in addition to big cap growth stocks failing to make new highs. This week we have one bullish indicator, one neutral indicator, and 18 are bearish. This is certainly a reason to be cautious as we position for potential weakness to continue into this week. The S&P 500 continued a move lower about 4.5% from the recent high, closing right above 5,400 put wall support. With RSI dropping and volume increasing, MACD has rolled over completely, has yet to show any signs of a reversal. At the same time, S&P 500 price to peak earnings ratio is back to near all-time highs. So at a minimum, we'd like to see a move back above Friday's high. That said, we all know the negative part of September is the seasonality, which tends to get worse in the second half of the month, while the Fed continues its juggling act and potentially cutting rates by 25 basis points this month. We have consumer credit tomorrow. CPI on Tuesday and PPI on Wednesday. Data points we'll be focusing on in the short term. With CPI potentially holding near this 0.29%, 0.26% for the month of August. With the big change expected to be money supply, which has dropped dramatically from the peak at 26.7%, noted by Charlie Bellello over at Creative Planning. But it has dropped off quite a bit, so the money supply is only increasing 0.1% after a huge drop from 26.7%. So this alone should help the Fed with cutting rates, which many are expecting to be more modest at 25 basis points each with 200 basis points over the next year. With those rate cuts, we should see small caps bounce. I would think that maybe the 200 day is a good area to start planning for, along with growth stocks, which have shown weakness as well, leading the markets lower with a lower high, looking for a test at a minimum of the 200 day moving average, being led by NVIDIA, which is showing weakness and potentially a test of the 200 day moving average down near 90. In addition, we want to pay attention to the New York FANG index. Note the previous occasions where RSI in the upper panel pulled back to the 30% level and then reversed. We're a little bit off of that level with the potential for a test of the 200-day moving average with this index. MACD and Stochastic still moving lower, but Stochastics is starting to get oversold. Last time we got oversold Stochastic, it lasted a couple of weeks. We finally made a trip lower and then reversed. So we'd need to see the reversal at a minimum with the potential for a test of the 200 day. As we've shown with the red shading, aligned with a MACD setup Stochastics is oversold, but the short-term MACD has yet to make a turn, like we saw back here in the first week of August, which led to that follow-through. So one of the things I'm watching very closely, which led to that pullback in the S&P 500 at its trough, was the Japanese yen-Australian dollar pair and the fact that the Bank of Japan raised interest rates aggressively leading to a potential for a retracement back up to those highs. So that's something we'll have to watch for in the short term. As the Nikkei continues to show that descent that we saw back in July, which led up to that rate hike by the Bank of Japan and that lower low back in the first week of August. So we're already starting to head lower, back below the 200-day moving average, 
with potential for more downside over the next couple of weeks. And as that weakness persists, we're watching the advanced decline percent and breadth to continue deteriorating. If it does bounce, we'd look for a, a move back above Friday's high. That would be a tall order in the short term, given seasonality and everything else that's going on at the present time. With that change in breadth, we're seeing the NASDAQ composite summation index, NASI, about to cross over bearish again with the index pulling back to the 200-day moving average, something that we expect to see this week. Wait for a reaction and or a bounce before putting any money to work on the long side. Finally, if we do see more weakness in the S&P 500 and the other U.S. indices, we'd expect to see this indicator, the ratio between VIX and the 10-year yield. When the VIX rises, it indicates fear, and when the Treasury yields drop, that reflects a flight to quality. So we're watching AGG, Barclays Aggregate Bond Fund, IEF, the 7 10-year bond, TLT, the 20-year bond, for movements that relate to what we're seeing here. By relating the two, the falling yield has an effect of driving the VIX higher. So we'd expect to see this rip to the upside if that fear increases or accelerates like we've had back in 2020 and 2021 towards the end where the bear market started. We don't expect this to get all the way back to that level, but a acceleration here would definitely be something we'll be watching as momentum indicators clearly depict that this could continue in the short term. Spot gas is back down to 2021 lows with potential for this to continue to drift lower into the election. Coincidence? I don't know, but we are lower on gasoline weekly spot price. You can see momentum indicators are also turning lower. In addition, gold and silver prices have been moving lower with silver headed back down to its lower Bollinger Band and potentially a retest of the 200-day moving average. Copper is also pulling back, which is telling you the economy is slowing, along with the Deutsche Bank Commodity Index ETF. This is making new lows, showing that the economy is slowing as well, with the U.S. dollar retesting its 2024 lows. With most sectors showing weakness, we'd expect to see more follow-through to the downside. There are some exceptions, like real estate. However, semiconductors continue to show weakness, along with biotechs, materials, communications. That would be Google, Meta, Netflix, energy also driving lower. Financials pulling back as well, along with the industrials, technology sector, with some strength still remaining in consumer staples, a defensive sector, while healthcare retested its 21 day moving average. Look for a test of the 50 if weakness persists. Retail is also showing weakness, along with weakness in consumer discretionary. And finally, the consumer discretionary to consumer staples ratio. You know when this turns down, that's bearish for the markets. When it's moving higher, that's bullish. Right now, we have a bearish indication. Caution's warranted as volatility remains high, which also means that you can sell premium. You have higher implied vols. So that's some potential that we'll look at this week, along with options traders. If you're day trading, if you're comfortable day trading, I'm sure there will be some opportunities this week. This week, we have earnings in GameStop, Adobe, FedEx, and Costco. Keep an eye on some of these names below. There's very few names that I would be interested in taking to the long side with focus on some of the consumer staples stocks like Campbell's Soup making higher highs. Uh, we'd need to see a move above 52.33 to continue this trend, but the 921.50 are all pointing up and to the right. A defensive sector, volume looks pretty good. MACD stochastics higher. If you have the inclination to put any money to work, despite the fact that we have seasonality and are in a state where we want to remain cautious, 
there are stocks that look like they could follow through. Companies like Rhythm Pharmaceuticals and the Healthcare Group. Remember, the healthcare is testing the 21-day moving average with the potential to move down to the 50-day. That said, some of these stocks in the pharmaceutical group are moving higher. We are making new highs each day, moving above the previous daily high in each case on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Bollinger Bands are opening up. So Rhythm Pharmaceuticals looks like it could retest 50.22. Look for some supply there. Bag holders that got stuck, they'll be looking to break even. If we make it through that level this week, look for a test of 52-week highs. MACD and stochastics are rising, volume increasing, and RSI is moving higher. A lot of people talking about Palantir being added to the S&P 500. Not crazy about the pattern, but if we do make a new high above Friday's high of the day, that would indicate a bullish bias into Tuesday. We have to see that tomorrow if you're interested in trading Palantir. Note the Bollinger Bands are coming together, so despite the fact that it's being added to the S&P 500, it doesn't show a lot of momentum, just volume at this point. Maybe it's too early. We'll see how it opens on Monday morning. Palantir being added to the S&P 500. Dell also being added to the S&P 500, though it is below its 200-day moving average and volume has been increasing. Momentum indicators are all turned lower. So at a minimum, we'd need to see the short-term MACD turn up. Okay, that's still pushing lower. So the momentum here is clearly bearish on Dell, despite it being added to the S&P. Funds that follow the S&P 500 obviously will need to buy shares. So keep an eye on Dell and Palantir this week. Dynatrace, one of those stocks that showed up on a scan, looking for a new daily high, higher than Thursday's high. The scan also looks for momentum. We're seeing the MACD on the short time frame turn up, while the medium and long term are also starting to show potential. Look for Dynatrace to continue higher this week, especially with a bullish bias to start as it closed higher on Friday. Zotus Pharmaceuticals also showing potential, making new highs on Friday above Thursday's high of the day. So a new daily high, looking for a move through 190.22, 190.25 would do it. Keep an eye out for supply. If we do see a push above and then a quick reversal, that'll tell you that institutions are still selling into strength. 921.50 are all turned up and to the right. Volume increasing last week. Looking for Zotus to continue higher along with Rhythm Pharmaceuticals. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, Sunday, the 8th of September. I'll send out a watch list later tonight around 12 midnight on the East Coast, around 9 o'clock on the West Coast. So be sure to check your inbox for that. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, and we'll see you in the morning.